Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. My name is Chet. I'm your host. If you are watching on YouTube, you can see me in my painting uniform. That's my hat to keep the light out of my eyes from my light above my easel and my old lady glasses because my vision's not what it used to be. And, uh... Yeah, so uh, today I interviewed Tim Malloy. He's an artist from New Zealand and uh, love his work. You may uh, remember him from the podcast with him and John Baynert and Christopher Ulrich talking about the Toddler Pillars project we had a few episodes ago. And uh, we hit it off, so I thought I'd have him on the show. And... Uh, so I've seen his comic book work since Christopher was recommending his, his, that I check out his comic books and he sent me some and I really dug them and, uh, really inspired me seeing these comic books he's doing. And so I had to have him on the show and we ended up talking quite a bit about AI. This was an unexpected thing just kind of happened, but it's been on a lot of artists' minds these days. In fact, I need to do an episode on it, I think, because it's really a big, big thing happening right now that affects many artists, good and bad. Um, yeah, so that's coming up. I have been um, working very hard, getting mystery boxes packed and shipped and um, as you can see in the background if you're watching on YouTube some some uh, paintings I've been creating for special boxes I don't want to give the surprise away but I'll leave it at that um, yeah just been really busy dealing with orders the holidays are always very busy for me so um, I'm just dealing with that, and that's about it. That's all I can do, just to keep up with, with shipping orders. And it's been good. Sales have been good, and uh, now I'm I'm uh, dealing with that. So, uh, but everything's going well. We seem to be right on schedule, and uh, that's it. I mean, that that that's why I can't really tell you anything else that's going on because that's pretty much all that's going on <laughs> oh skull shop once again i'm not going to do the skull shop giveaway this this week just because i could not get it together in time because i have to print out everybody at the five dollar level cut them out on pieces of paper put them in a hat and it's kind of a pain in the ass so but anyway this is a skull from the skull shop s-k-u-l-s-h-o-p-p-e and if you join our Patreon at the $5 level, you'll be entered to win a free skull. And that is patreon.com slash darkartsociety. And you can join for as little as a dollar as well, just to support. We've got no new subscribers. Otherwise, I would be reading the names of subscribers this week. Um... I also have a personal Patreon, patreon.com slash chetzar, where I post all of the work I'm doing while I'm doing it. And uh, lots of time-lapse videos and all kinds of good stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Let's get on with the interview. That's why you came, right? So here we go. My interview with Tim Malloy, and I hope you enjoy it. Hello, Tim. Hey, Chet. How, How are you? Good. How are you? Very well. Thanks. That's good. Okay. End of interview. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming on. So excited to my, ha my ha pleasure. have you on again. Um, that was a great interview before we did with you and Christopher. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I guess I should tell people um, how this came about. Uh, yeah. because 
what happened was after the interview, Christopher was like, you got to see Tim's comic book work. And, or we talked about it. No, we talked about it on the podcast. That's what it was. I think he mentioned it. Yeah. And uh, you sent me your comics and I was like, oh my God, I have to make a comic. <laughs> <laughs> I was so impressed with particularly those ones. I don't know what the title was. Maybe they didn't have titles because they didn't have any words. <laughs> but the, uh, the but, silent, yeah, silent. the silent ones. It was so oh. cool, so cool because I mean that that's so Hitchcock, you know, like where you where you tell the story yeah. without words. That's that's kind of the essence of filmmaking. They say like the really hardcore filmmakers yeah. where it's like get your idea yeah. across without any any dialogue. And I just found that <clears throat> so inspiring. And it took me back to when I used to read Heavy Metal magazine. And the one time I started a comic was after I saw this comic, a specific comic in heavy metal magazine, and I started doing the comic. I mean, I'm like 15 or 14 or something or 13. Yeah. And I never finished it. And I always thought I got to make a comic because it was so fun and, and, and so cool. And then I saw your comic and literally it's the it just was like a lightning bolt. Like, I have to make a comic. This is so cool. It was really <laughs> inspirational to me so i was like okay that uh that um i i may have had a direct hand in um in making a a chet czar comic (laughs) exist in the in the universe that's that's good that's a career highlight in of itself it's Um, well it's gonna happen it's gonna happen because i I really i was so inspired it was just uh i don't know something about because i've read comics all my life um mostly horror comics when i was a kid that was my thing and and then as, a, me. <laughs> as an adult, uh, I kind of got away from it because there's so many comics that, yeah. that, that I don't even know. I wouldn't, it's like every time I thought, you know, I miss comics. I, I just wouldn't even know where to start because there's just so many of them. So I never really got back to it. Mm. Uh, just randomly, like everyone sees a comic now and then, and then, uh, yeah. but seeing yours was, was the light bulb moment for me. I have to say so good. So great. I love your, love your drawing style. Love the comics. It was just so right up my alley in every way. So great job. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah. So anyway, let's talk about you. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we met through uh, John Maynard, I believe. Unless we met yeah. online earlier that, that I'm not aware of. Sometimes that happens. Uh, no, I, I definitely think that John was the connection there. Okay. And you are uh, uh, an artist, a comic book bar- artist from way back, like 25 years? You've been doing comics or longer? Well, I mean, like you, I started when I was in my mid-teens or a bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um so I started publishing, well, self-publishing, you know, like zine style um, comics with a photocopier when I was um, 17, 16 or 17. Oh, I was cool. still in high school and, you know, just leaving them, um, leaving them around in like record stores and posting them to bus stops and, you know, <laughs> leaving them in public toilets. <laughs> you know. um, and this, it is was, it, yeah. this is in New Zealand. Right. This is in New Zealand, in Auckland, New Zealand. Okay, yeah. you're from New Zealand. Born and raised. Um, but I've been drawing. You know, I mean, like everybody, I, most pe- most people who call themselves artists just never stop drawing mm-hmm. from when they were a, a toddler. I think that's for me. That's always the seems to be the main thread, whatever skill or talent or whatever is going on in, in somebody. It's it's that sort of that through line. Yeah. Usually, yeah, usually, uh, but I, I've had usually. artists on the show that didn't start until they were nineteen or twenty. I, that always blows me away. That's a rare, though. That's rare. Mo- most people yeah. I interview are, are yeah, sort of, doing it as soon as they can hold a pencil. I think. I think some people, you know, I I talk about this. I end up talking about this a lot because it, I think it's a misconception, or I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe it's just maybe I'm the one with the misconception, but. You know, I think for most of us, it's not really about talent. It's just about sort of, you know, masochism and like 
grinding away at, at a craft but mm-hmm. some people you know people are like oh you're so talented i'm like it's this is really hard for me it's right. not easy yeah it's yeah a constant grind. that has been my whole life i love it and that's i think that's the thing that makes us artists is that a lot of people be like this is too hard and this sucks and i hate right. what i do but those are we're, we're crazy people so we just keep we keep going but some people genuinely are like you know they pick up a pencil for the first time at 20 and they're like oh, i'm really good at this yeah good on them but um, i'm very jealous right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's like Frazetta. You know, people that are prodigy, there are the that's the rare um the the rare artist that is like a Frazetta that just picks up a pencil and there's the story of him copying the whole anatomy book perfectly when he was a kid. I think he he wanted yeah. to get a job in an art studio and they said, "Here, you need to uh learn anatomy and they send him back with a book and he comes back the next day with everything copied perfectly and it's like that's not normal <laughs> that's like a genius weirdo person you know most of us have to practice and practice and practice and if and if there's anything it's that like you said it's that love and the obsession the ability to like hone in on something and just keep doing it until you get good at it yeah and i'm sure that there are people that are like like for, you know, m- mm-hmm. one of my favorite Frazetta stories is, you know, he had, a, I think he had a stroke later in life mm-hmm. and um, he was like, oh, I can't use my right hand anymore. I guess I'll just paint with my left hand. Right. Fuck you, God. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, just, just taught himself probably, I mean, sure it was a big struggle. I don't want to, you know, like, but I mean, you, th- that's the dedication. I'm sure that there are people who are born with that kind of lightning from the gods kind of talent that mm-hmm. Frazetta seemed to have or people like him. Who were like, eh, I, arts, I don't really like art. It sucks. You know, like there are probably people in the world who are generational geniuses who um, aren't into art. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. Isn't that a weird thing? To That's think about? totally weird. Yeah, yeah. Everything doesn't happen. There's, it, there's not like it's not a. This isn't a plot to a to a movie. Every everything isn't in place. Right. There are those loose ends in the world, and it's kind of like unsettling to think about <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean it, i i remember when uh my son i could tell when he was little because you can you know you can tell people that have it's like it's there's a little extra thing you can kind of see in kids i think any kid can develop into a great artist i really do if they're interested yeah. in it regardless of yeah. any innate talent but there is like a, a, a certain level of some people have more natural ability than others with something. I think. I think that's. Sure, that's a big yeah, Let's it's say. with that. It's just like being tall or short or whatever, you know. But um, <clears throat> I remember with my son, I could tell he would be able to draw. Like he was drawing it like a little kid does, and I, of course, always trying to encourage him. And but he wasn't interested. He was interested in playing the drums, and he. And he but he's got so, that obsessive, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Thing for music. And it's like his yeah. job now, you know. So Amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. But but it but he, you know, I I feel like he definitely had enough of a little edge to where he could be good if he kept with it. He just wasn't into it. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's wrong to push kids into something they're not into, especially an art career. <laughs> what, a, what a terrible thing to do to your kid. <laughs> I actively discourage my child from from being creative in any way. Um <laughs> Massive heartbreak. <laughs> uh, we need a doctor in the family. Yeah, anyway, right. A lawyer. I'm one of those parents. I'm like, your grades are not good enough. No, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> yeah, I got granddaughters now, and um, uh, I I do encourage them to be artists because they are uh, really good, actually. And yeah. so I, I I do I do encourage that, but you can't push it. They're either going to do it or they're not, you know, all the great artists I know did it, whether they were encouraged or not. And a lot of them were were discouraged from doing it and they still did it anyway. I think it's totally fine to also like, you know, have creativity and art as part of your life and not make it like an all consuming passion that, you know, ruins relationships. And yeah, true. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's your poor house for most of your life. (laughs) You don't, you can just like enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Absolutely. And I encourage that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I mean, in a way, not to, I don't want to get into this too early and I don't even know if you want to talk about it, but this is one of the good things about AI art is that it does allow people that have not learned how to be creative artistically with imagery, uh, an opportunity to see what it's like and to express themselves creatively. And, uh, but that's, you know, that's a whole, I've been, it's been coming up a lot for for me yeah. and, and have you been fighting with people no i'm because you're not you're not putting anything out you're not using it yourself are you so no not, not really but uh friends of mine are and um i, I am are you yeah, yeah. i i am yeah. I'm, I'm i'm still at the like uh, what happened was i had the the uh, my attitude was it's a new technology everyone should just learn it it's cool it's amazing and then i saw steven zapata's uh, video, his argument against image AIs, and it was all, and, mm -hmm. and I ended up having having him on the podcast to talk about it because it was. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard either of those, but but no, oh, it's it's it will it'll make you not want to use AI so much. But it's it, it was because the main issue is the way that the data was collected and the uh, the unethical way the data was collected. But, you know, right. they, and it was like they used some engine that is that has it, that is able to skirt copyright issues because it, it operates under a non-commercial nonprofit license. And right. so the engine can do that for nonprofit, for the good of humanity, you know, purposes. And yep. these AI companies are using that and now they're charging for that. So they they were able to like skirt the issue of copyright in that way, and so it's hard for me still to come around and just completely be into it, even though I know it's coming, and even though I I know that I eventually will be using it for sure, but yeah. I but I still it's like oh why didn't they just I, do it the right way and not be assholes? About I know it? it's the it's one of these things where it's like well you know the. The genie's really out of the bottle. I know, I know. And it's like, you know, I mean, we're here right now, but I mean, people aren't, people are using electricity now, 120 years after Edison, was it Edison? You know, mm -hmm. the whole Tesla Edison, all of that right. fucking Yeah, shit. right, right, yeah. right. And it's a, that's, it's a dumb argument, it's a, but it is a dumb argument, but it, <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I don't know, like, I think that if you're using the technology yourself in a deliberately unethical way, like if I was ty if I was typing in, you know, um, blah, 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 in the style of Chet Zar and then selling prints online and yeah. pretending I was you in a store, like that's obviously, right. You know, but I mean, a human being could do that. It would just take longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Whereas, if you're using the tech to try and do something that was impossible only a couple of months ago, which is sort of what I'm trying to do with it, mm -hmm. do with it. I, I, I generally try and what I'm doing is very sort of um, photography and kind of film, film based, mm. like instead of creating fictional, like a fiction, a, a fictional television show that's set within the world of my comics. And it's based on that 20 years of, and comics and paintings and it's 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 it, it, it's firmly inside my um you know yeah it's using your own narrative that I've been yeah. developing but i mean that's aside from the point that you brought up you know what yeah, i mean that's there are a lot of issues obviously yeah 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 uh, it's like disruptive tech comes along and my impulse and this is based on my own life experience and the experience of family members who i'm very close to who were in creative fields who didn't keep up with um, or weren't able to keep up, up with disruptive technology in their mm -hmm. own fields when it came along and it didn't go well for them. Right. You know? And, and for me, it's like, well, here's some disruptive tech. Let's, let's try and use it. And, um, you know, let's try and create a new kind of art. <laughs> with right. It, you know, let's not just like repeat. Yeah. Yeah. What kids are done. And yeah. Try and money off some t-shirts. Yeah. People will do that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I'm. I I, I'm. Uh. It's. It's. One of these. 
it I, I i'm just at the stage where i'm sort of uh i'm just conflicted and i don't have time to deal with it right now i've got other stuff going yeah. on so i can't so i can kind of afford to be have that attitude because i because I, I couldn't use it even if i wanted to yet because i have yeah. uh, you know I, I'm, I'm i have a schedule i'm trying to do a whole bunch of stuff that i have to get done and um but but the more you know, the more I learn about it, the more I just keep thinking, this is for me, this is going to be amazing. Oh you know, yeah. Cause I can automate all this shit. I saw this guy make this, he made like a kind of a crappy comic book with AI, but it was, he made a comic book in what was it? Make a comic book in an hour or something. Yeah. And it was like the AI wrote the comic book. And the AI did the art for the comic book just by using these prompts. And as much as it's as an artist, you're like, oh, come on, man. On the other hand, technologically, it's like that's such a powerful tool. You know, it's in an, yeah. as an artist, it, it makes me inspired. Like, man, what could I use that for? Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I want to make a comic yeah. book and I'm not necessarily a writer, but I have ideas. And so something like a writing AI uh, software would be really helpful to me because because I read mm. a, I read a lot so I, I I think I can judge if writing is well written to a degree and so yeah. you know the idea that you can generate you can have an idea and it'll generate text for you and you can go in and chop it up and move it around and add to it yeah. is just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing for me like th there's Ooh. definitely the people that hear you hear you saying that who are like this is blasphemy against the human spirit of consciousness and art and blah, 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 blah. like and i mean i get that i get where they're coming from i probably honestly i probably would have felt the same way earlier in my life and not just because i was younger but mm. because I, I may i may have thought about different things but how is that any different from you know a bunch of like, what i think about when i think about ai is like this is a a, an infinite novelty surrealism machine if you mm -hmm. use it in the right way and to me it reminds me of like the, it reminds me of like a, a surrealist games and techniques right. but, but but and it also reminds me of things what you're talking about immediately makes me think of william burroughs and like the cut yeah, up the cut up thing yeah and, and all of that and collage you know if, if collage is okay collage is fine isn't it we're not mad at college. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. People and it's like, the kind of is like, well, William Burroughs is kind of, I mean, whatever you think about him as a, as a person or whatever, he's an important artist and yeah. voice in modern art and literature <laughs> um, and film, if you, if you really want and to. And the occult. You know, and the occult. Um, <laughs> and all of these things come together. And, you know, I think to myself, if we really uh, look at it, sometimes I don't even know if free will exists, man. I don't even, I don't know if we're in a simulation. <laughs> I think that we're the universe experiencing itself in one way right. or another, um, whatever the hell that means or, or implies. So these, these, these technologies that come along for me, I'm just so not, I'm, I'm so not frightened by them at all. Like right. as, a, as an artist, as, as a comic artist, as somebody you've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of my comics that I've labored over, over 20 years. If a machine can make something cool in, in half an hour, that's amazing. I want to be able to use that. Right. Um, yeah. The, the, the okay. other thing that you need to remember too. So what my last point on this is that you can skirt around. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's all part of the, that initial, initial ethical problem, but you can feed your work as image, your own work. Right. Chetzar can feed right. it one Chetzar painting or three Chetzar painting. And get variations and of them. And yep. Um, or you can tell it to um, do anything really, Yeah. you know, and then, and then you can, use, what, what I've been doing aside from the stuff that I've been um, posting on Instagram um, is feeding in some of my big complex, you know, colorful illustrations that, you know, I've, I've done myself into the AI and then blending them together and remixing them and, just as a way to get yourself out of compositional. Right. Oh, yeah. Color, yeah. It's just yeah. like, oh, out. and so I'm going to use those as references for more hand-drawn work. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It feels like this really, I guess some people have, have. I mean, I've seen The Terminator, obviously. I've seen The Matrix. <laughs> but when when I think about AI and artificial intelligence, the the, <laughs> the fictional 
<laughs> I mean, we live in reality, but the, the fictional stuff that informs my thinking about it is um, Ian M. Banks's The Culture books. Have you ever read those? Mm-hmm. Or incredible stuff, just amazing. Like um, he he passed away um, unfortunately um, nine years ago, um, so there won't be any more of them. But um, yeah, there's ten science fiction books set set in a far distant kind of future kind of thing where um it's kind of like a utopian freewheeling utopian science fiction series where the um artificial intelligence basically runs runs the show Mm -hmm. you know um but it's 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 very it's not it's not um it's not like kind of you know how before he goes crazy like the ais are absolute personalities um who are doing these things they could destroy everything if they wanted to but they're Right. You know, they're real people within the within the thing. Um, the minds of these vast cities, they're called minds. And they're, they're like the personalities that inhabit these like vast sort of city-sized ships, you know, that everybody lives on, habitats and space. Anyway, I could, this isn't about, and it is the culture, but <laughs> when I think of this AI thing, I think I think of all the stuff I've read in those books and gone, awesome. Like right. I've, got a, I've got a little buddy helper now who can, you know, who can help me make, I I'm I'm a hundred percent with I'm a hundred percent with you. I I I like I said I, I out the gate I was like everyone should just learn it. All artists should mm. just learn it. Then I saw this video and I was so upset about the way the data was was gotten. And yeah. you know if you watch this video they they did it that way on purpose because oh, they yeah. because they didn't do it that way for their uh, for music AI. Because mm-hmm. because they specifically said in their terms or in their, I don't know what the paperwork is, their white papers or their terms of service. They specifically didn't, uh, they they didn't skirt the copyright issue or copyright issue with music because they said they didn't want to infringe on mu- musicians' rights. But they don't, yeah. you know. But they did it with artists because they can. Uh, visual yep. artists so so that was so upsetting to me that it really kind of pissed me off and turned me you know i, I turned kind of turned me against it a bit and yep. but i still i so i've been thinking about it a lot i posted the other day on twitter i i what i've come to now at this point because everything's moving so fast is that probably the best thing to do is learn the technology and also support any kind of legislation or any organizations you can that hold these companies accountable for uh, to try and compensate artists somehow or or deal with the copyright issue and make it fair blah 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 but still you got to learn this stuff cuz regardless of what happens it's just not going away for sure that's just, it's there's no way there's no yeah. way it's going away it's here to stay and what else are you going to do be like run over by it or, or try and adapt to it and maybe fail, but I don't know. You, know, it, it, but, you, you have these, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you, you're absolutely right. Somebody said to me the other day um, on the internet, um, you know, uh, they were like, uh, unfollowing, you know, right around like, bye-bye. And they, and they said, microwave art. Is this, um, they called it microwave art, which I thought was clever. Uh, <laughs> um, for that, but um, it's just a face. And I didn't respond because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly too busy these days to, um, I used to love having fights online, yeah. but I don't anymore. Um, yeah. But I, especially about stuff like this, yeah. uh, you know, who cares? Um, you know, it's an opinion, and that's wonderful. And I've, I've got mine, but um, I felt like saying I uh, thought that about abstract expressionism, but it's still here, right? You know? Right? Yeah, like, yeah. Or conceptual art, or I don't know, like I don't know. Yes, you're absolutely yeah, right. There are there are issues for sure, but you're also right that it's it isn't going away. And um, yeah, I don't know. And it's, it's, it's it, one of those things. And it's super inspiring and super exciting as an artist and creative person. Like I keep thinking about the possibilities how I could use it, and it just is the most exciting thing ever. I I really like. Um, I wish I had um, talked to you a bit about this um, before the podcast. Like I would have, because I'm like very like i'm doing i'm really really busy with the, the toddler pillars graphic novel and uh, i've been doing um i just did a billboard for a french music festival which is cool but this is like it's heavy like commercial-esque illustration and i can't isn't my instagram is just like here's something i did it's right. fun it's all my brain directly from my brain to you so this stuff's like can't really share it in that way so that's why i got into the um 
the AI, I, the AI art thing myself and um it's kind of taking off it's going things are going pretty crazy for me with it like really um check out what i've what i've been doing uh it's it's a television show called um legends of the golden child mm -hmm. and it's a um kind of nightmare it's mr unpronounceable's favorite show oh, cool. um, <laughs> it's, it's, he actually mentions it in, a, in one of the books that i sent you um you know like six years ago i've been thinking about this for six years like a spin-off show um it's originally based on the um ap apocryphal gospel um the thomas the infancy gospel gospel of thomas mm -hmm. um, which is like i think it was one of the dead sea scrolls mm -hmm. it's a wild story about how um you know we because we don't hear much about i'm going on some pretty wild tangents Maybe <laughs> that's <I can> okay <laughs> myself in. but anyway <laughs> check it out okay it, yeah it, it, let me know what you think because it's um been very popular i've been getting a lot of interesting dms from some people who are i've been getting a lot of um not a lot of hate but um some opportunities seem to be arising which are not blowing my mind because of it oh know. cool well I'll... communicating ideas quickly it's just you know what i mean it's yeah. like i couldn't ever have done done this but yeah I'm, but I'm... no no i, I mean f I, i'm just yeah, we, we. I want to get back to you know. I, I do want to get back to your story because I, I I want to hear your your life story and all this stuff. But uh, I uh, I will say I'm just I'm so every time I see a new AI technology that I didn't wasn't aware existed, I just get immediately inspired and excited about it. And cool. Yeah, I'm so I'm like totally into it. I, and it bums me out that that I have to feel bad about it at the same time because of that those fucking corporate assholes that d built this yeah. on the backs of a bunch of artists. I just it pisses me off. But but you know that's life. Life is messy. But um but I am really really I'm just so inspired by it. Like I I feel like all of these things I've been dreaming about for the last twenty years I might be able to actually make like a movie i just i you know, have you i'm sure you've seen the uh text to video thing that i i, I just honestly watched... haven't even, i've seen a few things and, and got, i saw an elephant like google has yeah yeah it was a google thing it was a, it was like a teddy bear washing a dish and it was stupid right but <laughs> it was amazing this this was created from a prompt and it was just blew my mind and and you know taking a 2d image and of a of a of some old pirate ships and then animating them through through prompt text prompts through the water and water and waves going up just completely yeah. mind-blowing and i and i just keep thinking about what you know all the things i could do with it as an artist it, it, it makes you think of things like it really does get into into sort of sci-fi territory yeah you, know, you project your head and it's like i my mind is suddenly like thinking um you know the holodeck and star trek this is what we're talking about you know like um you, you know you, the uh, virtual uh, uh, you know in star trek yeah yeah and it's like that that's what we're talking about it's that direct that direct interface creating a sort of visual experience and feedback and i mean you know I mean, we could go on and talk about this all day, and maybe we should we should get on to something else. But it is one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I see people going, "Oh, this is terrible!" Like now, everybody's gonna make art, and it's it's like, I, I don't think that's terrible. Yeah, either. right, right. It's not like your neighbor, who's an old lady, is gonna take your job as a concept artist. Yeah, you know? right, right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like just everybody relax a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I I yeah. I, I posted uh this morning. I posted. That this remind this whole AI thing reminds me of back when I was in the film industry in the '90s and Jurassic Park came out and all the effects people were just like, "Oh my God, the industry's over. We're, we're, we're it's over. Makeup effects is done." And everyone was freaked out. And yeah. and it but it did fuck the industry up a bit and we lost a lot of work and it got smaller. But it's still there's still a makeup effects. There's still practical effects and I know people that are still working in that business. You know, so yeah. it didn't, it, it did take a bit of the market share, but it's still there. And if you really want to do it, you can make a good living yeah. at it still. So it, it, it's one of those things. It's like we, you know, when you're 
like we can look back at the invention of photography. Right. I don't know if you've read about any of that, but some you read some of the quotes. Um, I think a guy called Charles Baudelaire hit talking about photography. You could just replace photography with AI. It's yeah. Exactly the same yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And painting is and still around, you know. The stupidity of the masses are just going to embrace this. And it's going to ruin <laughs> art. And that's well, exactly what people are saying. And it, for me, it's like you're calling people stupid. Yeah. Like artists, guys, you, you're kind of being dicks about mm-hmm. this. You're kind of gatekeeping a little bit. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And I mean, photography, photography led directly to surrealism, which is something that I, right. have, I would count myself as a part of, you know, as a movement in art um, in one way. And it, I don't know. And again, we've still got painting. But anyway, I'm sure there's a lot more yeah. debate to be had. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge subject. I, I shouldn't have brought it up. But, uh, maybe good. we can, uh, maybe you can come on again and we could just talk about AI one time. This is the, okay. this is to introduce people who may, may not know your work to who Same you are. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. okay, let's get back to you. So okay. you were an art kid where you, did yep. you have supportive parents? Yeah. Um, yeah, generally, I, you know, they, they I, I think my, 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 so my father um, was a professional photographer. Oh, okay. So and he came from a, a very creative place. Um, that's why he started making it. Um, there's a, another one of my my uncles who um, passed away before I was born, who I'm named after. Tim was a um, pr- protege, um, one of those people who right. just had, has that sort of, uh, you know, gift, gift. from the gods yeah. of the world, the gift. Um, he he passed away when he was 21, so long before I was born, but I was named oh, after him. Um, there... My, you know, my mother, I think, always kind of wanted to be an artist herself, but she wasn't encouraged. Um, so I don't know. They just they fostered it in me. Um, I think mum was was always kind of like, maybe you could be an architect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Some sort of thing that would make more money. Um, <laughs> but they, but they, yeah, they they were always, you know, um, very supportive of me. And you know, it, it's just something that I just did all the time, like that I've done all the time for my whole life. Um, one of my earliest memories, actually, and I think this is what set me off, really, one of because it, it just sticks out in my mind, is um, I would have been five my first year at primary school in New Zealand, and we had to do self-portraits. And um, I had a very uh, quite terrifying teacher, Mrs. Mrs. Whiskers. Miss, Miss Whiskers. Um, Whiskers? <laughs> Miss Whiskers. Um, she... I know, and she was she was straight out of a Roald Dahl book. Um, she, she was like Mrs. Truncheon from um, Matilda, in my memory. Um, and she uh, saw my picture, grabbed me by the arm, grabbed my picture. You know, didn't say anything. You know, just mar- I thought she was angry at me. I didn't know what was happening. She marched me a couple of classrooms up and paraded me and my drawing in front of a bunch of seven year olds and berated them for not being as good an artist as me. Wow. You know? <laughs> she used me in her abusive children. Um, but I, you know, I honestly, I, you know, I think I've been chasing that, um, that dragon ever since, you know, right. chasing, was it, was it chasing the dragon, <laughs> you know, chasing the feeling anyway. Um, it's it's very, huge. Uh, it's huge to get that kind of um, recognition at that age. You're forming your identity from, and from something that you're scared of. Too. Yeah, and right. Or a power kind of play, and you know, it's like, well, this is a way for me to circumnavigate a lot of. You know, I mean, you don't think this consciously when you're five, but you know, it's like people who are. You know, you always hear people who make a career in comedy. They're like, oh, I, I just used comedy as a way to not get beaten up when I was right. a kid. Right. <laughs> not that I was bullied or anything, but it's like. I always it's felt just, that. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like, this makes me a kid who just, I just get to be me and do this. You know, because right. I'm the, I'm the artist and it's good. people think it's cool. And it's like, well, yeah. you know, um, yeah, it wasn't really good. doing anything else. Yeah, it was like, it's a, you know, you form form of identity and and hmm. and almost protection in a weird way yeah you know i, mean, I don't know i always felt like yeah i was able to hide behind my art in a way 
it, mm. it was it, it was like that with music too because i was such a really shy person and as a young adult i was in bands and i was like the front man and the singer and when right. it, when i was doing playing music i believed in i was just i didn't, had no fear of getting up in front of people and playing which was crazy because i was super super shy but if you if it was just me going up in front of people at the time <laughs> oh god it would have you know i couldn't have done it but so there yeah. there, there seemed it's it's like art kind of had for me like this talismanic power in a way i don't know it's like it's like a superpower you have that other yep. kids don't have and so you kind yeah, of yeah, feel yeah. like special because of it you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's... In, in, in later life um it like you know I've, I've played music myself too and like you know there's that feeling of you know, when it's working, it's like the, the music is flowing through you and you're just there, right. you know, almost observing. Um, and when I'm doing my best art, it, it feels like the same thing, you know, like, I, but yeah. like I'm some sort of conduit for, the flow you state. know, for something. And I mean, I re- you know, when I was in my 20s and experimenting with psychedelics, I really did think I was a conduit for something. Quite Philip K. Dick kind of stuff, but you know. <laughs> I was reading a lot of Philip K. Dick too, so that probably didn't help. But um, yeah, I'm a bit less egotistical and about it now. And also, like, uh, you know, um, it becomes a martyr kind of thing as well. Almost, it's like you know, when you're when you're 19 and like starting to kind of experience maybe some of this kind of cosmic, kind of weird, magical synchronicity stuff that mm-hmm. that goes on in life, and you've also got magic mushrooms in the mix and you've got Philip K. Dick in the mix mm. and you've got like, <laughs> lapsed Catholicism from childhood in the mix. Like, that's a dangerous right. kind of, <laughs> uh, some kind of mess- messianic kind of ideas that are floating around. In, oh yeah. In the yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm way, way past that now. Um, which, um, and you know, funnily enough, it's, and, and I don't, don't want to open the can of worms again, but um, one of the things that I, that I like about AI is it's um, if you use it in what in another sort of way, it's almost like art without ego, right. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's, which is very liberating, to be honest. Yeah. Um, if you put it in that kind of context. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's, that's sort of how it all started anyway. I just, you know, in a regular kind of way, I don't know, just drew right through and I um got into uh, I had some friends who were going to an animation school in Auckland New Zealand called mm-hmm. freelance art school and um, they seemed to be having a good time and they were they were they were all smoking a lot of weed and having having a great time drawing drawing cartoons um, and I was like well this sounds good um, and so I signed up for that and I got in um, to animation school um, at the beginning of my seventh form year um I, I don't know what they call it in the states but i was 17 you know that's your last year of high wow. school mm-hmm. um so i kind of cruised for my for my last year at school and you know i we we call it a what do you, you call it in america playing hooky from class is that mm-hmm. right yeah you know, we call it wagging so i wagged or like ditching. History. I, ditching yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a ditched history we had a real asshole history teacher which is ironic now because I love history, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Failed that, you know. I, I didn't do, do very well in, in history of art. Another thing that I'm very passionate right. about now. <laughs> um, so I was just I spent all my whole year in the design room because I'm like, well, you know, I, I don't. I'm not going to university. I don't. I don't need these grades. Whatever. I'm going. I'm going to be an animator. Um, that was my my thing, you know. And um, with you know, two D cell animation, and I was going to move into three D animation. That's that's sort of the the career path I had in my mind. And then I was going to move to the United States and um, direct my own animated, <laughs> my, <laughs> my own animated features. Just boom, <laughs> straight out of it, straight out of, out of school. Um, you know, my unique vision for the world as, <laughs> as a seventeen year old. Uh, and and so I um I spent my whole so year really. in, in design. Um, I didn't get into art school. I never did art in high, in high school. Like I, I wasn't good enough. I didn't get in to any of the entry exams. Couldn't draw a cube properly or whatever, you know. What? Um, yeah, I just, you know, um, it was one of those things. So I did do graphic design, like, you know, with set squares and 
lab engineering kind of stuff through through high school, which was boring. You didn't take uh, art classes in high school though. No. Oh, weird. No. Yeah, I just wasn't. I wasn't. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't go through the um the uh, you know, I I had a lot of friends who went to um, Elam, which was the and and Whitecliff, which were the two big art schools after high school, like the art colleges or universities. Um, you know, Elam was part of Auckland University. A lot of friends that went there. I spent like all of my late, you know, my early, my my late teens and early twenties hanging out at university and specifically around the art school kids, um, going to the parties, going to the art shows, mm. totally part of the theme, but just, <laughs> I just didn't go to the art schools. I was, I was in animation school, like drawing like Bugs Bunny, like, right. you know, eating, eating a carrot every day. Um, or whatever they were, they were they're actually sorry not bugs bunny they were um all the animators from there a lot of them were from the disney they were disney animators you know hmm. um and, and so they set up the school it was good you know i had a good time there i i learned i learned some stuff um i learned to not be precious about my drawings there yeah you know that's a good I learned about pencil mileage mm-hmm. i learned about the film that sucks throw it away start again yeah um totally <laughs> you know um it's kind of like, you know, animation is very, um, as you know, it's like brutal, like, it's like boot camp, you know, I guess. Yeah. It's not like, boot camp. it's not like wading through the mud, but I mean, metaphorically speaking. Um, so I did that and I did really well and I got into um, the, I did, I, I did the 3D stuff and I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was making 3D, you know, just at school, my own projects, not what's, taking, not taking holidays, just. What's I, off, just, what software? 3D Studio Max. Okay. Which I don't even know. I wouldn't know. I, I tried. I, that was one that I tried early on and I, was, I could not figure it out. Uh, this is <laughs> another thing. So, so speaking about disruptive tech, when I, 20 years ago, yeah. when I was studying 3D Max at, at school, my tutor was like, oh, you know, because we, we, you, you do all the modeling in 3D Max. So you did those days with um, vectors. So you're attaching like a vector to a vector and create, or, you know, you make a sphere and yeah. a lot of that kind of stuff um and you know it's it's all it was all very labor intensive for a 3d kind of program um mm-hmm. my tutor was like oh you know it's all very well teaching you the stuff now but like you know give it five or ten years and this will all be irrelevant you'll just be able to you know you'll be like your modeling will be like it'll be more like virtual clay you'll just like draw on really the, and you're absolutely right i've got it on my, on my ipad well, yeah, 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 that's crazy. On my phone, I can do I can do modeling of the kind that I was doing with these giant computers twenty years ago. Um, anyway, did some work there uh, after after um, school. Worked on a couple of kids shows in Auckland um, as a two D animator, and I was really bad at two D animation. Like not good at it at all. No? It was a thing, but you know, <laughs> it was a wage. Um, and they 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 kept me around which was nice. Um, <laughs> and then I, um, I ended up, and all, all the way through, I'm doing comics, by the way, like, like all the okay. way through this. I'm so that was the, drawing, drawing, drawing. the through line. That was the one constant yeah. through everything was yeah. comics. Yeah. And it was all like the whole time, especially once um, I was in, like I got out of high school before I, but you know, 16, 17, I was doing kind of like gag cartoons sort of, I started off um, kind of aping Evan Dorkin and his milk and cheese comics. I don't uh, know if you've ever seen. Them. Yeah, yeah. So I had a character called um, Nasty Neville, and oh, it was like Calvin and Hobbes versus milk and cheese. So it was like <laughs> Nasty Neville and Wicked Weasel. Wicked Weasel. <laughs> I think it was the <laughs> Shit. Um, there wasn't back then, anyway, um, or maybe it was. I didn't know. But um, and but then that then I had a character called Nin. I had these three characters: Ninja Sheep. New Zealand sheep or a ninja sheep and drunken otter who was just a drunken otter who was just constantly ruining everything with his drunken antics and um <laughs> and Satan. So there, there were three buddies <laughs> um, and that was my main thing and I had some friends doing comics with me but then um I took some uh magic mushrooms and um I was like boom and I, I just immediately started basically the comics that that I sent you uh what I ended up doing based on that first time that my mind went. Wow. Okay. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I haven't even, I don't even smoke weed these days. Um, but, and I didn't do a huge amount, you know, not, right. I wasn't Robert. Crumb, you know, like 
with with LSD um, or anything, but it did have an effect on me. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Um, in any case, comics all the way through, and it was always like, this is you know what I what I want to do is I want to tell my own stories. Like I want to I want to I'm going to work in the industry. I'll work my way up, and then mm. I'll, um, I'll get to a position where I'll have some sort of influence and um, clout or whatever you know, in my mind, and I'll, and I'll be able to produce my own stuff on a, on a bigger scale than photocopied comics, which was sort of, you know, leaving them in bus stops is, yeah, great, yeah. is great, but I've got bigger, bigger, bigger dreams. Um, so I worked in the industry for a while and quickly realized that that's not how it was going to work for me because, you know, if you if you get to a position where you're um, really good at a low-level position, they don't promote you, they keep yeah. you there. And it was, so the only, the only cr- cross-promotional, the only way you were going to get promoted it was like cross studio stuff you know mm-hmm. and it wasn't a huge industry in new zealand so yeah. i moved to australia mm. um and uh when i was i don't know it was 16 years ago 17 six, jesus i've been here a long time uh quite a while ago um with the idea of okay there's a big industry here i'll get into animation in australia and there's like more opportunity and the money's better um but i immediately fell into like dishwashing um and i was getting paid way more than i was getting paid as an animator in new zealand really um <laughs> at the time yeah just the just the the, the way that the dollars the, the um, oh, right. new zealand dollar against the australian dollar yeah, and the yeah. cost of living and just this was 16 17 years ago i don't know things have evened out a bit but um and also entry level animation is never going to be that special anyway um but i'm working half the time making more money and I'm meeting people, I'm playing rock and roll music and, and, and I'm, I'm drinking all the time and meeting people, having a wonderful time, making art all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was around then that I met John Bayer. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so, um, and I think that kind of, that takes that takes me up to um, where we got to last time we spoke, anyway. You know? Right. Wow, yeah. okay. So, um, you know, this just occurred to me because <laughs> someone texted me right now. It's so funny. He said, a friend of mine, I'm seeing so many people posting about AI art, <laughs> threatening to unfollow, unfriend people who post any AI art. And by doing so, there are somehow some, uh, blah, he's just, he's, he's saying how pissed he is that people are having this horrible reaction to AI and unfollowing yeah. and unfriending and saying that you're anti art. And yeah. this is exactly like the, this what people said about nfts too. <laughs> that's the other thing that totally reminds me of like people fucking hate nfts i guess it's just like again like we're, we're sorry in to go back to universe, it infinite universe we're all going to be worm food like <laughs> instantaneously in the grand scheme of things we're already dead in the cosmic scale right what are we doing man like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well i mean people should i think I don't know. People, people shouldn't be so reaction reactionary. I guess they need to think about why they feel the way they do and mm. what is the idea based on. You know, is because yeah. I, I think for yeah. a lot of people, and the, the thing is, it's, I I do feel sympathy for illustrators and and book illustrators and stuff uh, because you know it's 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 threatening their livelihood potentially and, but I mean, and it's I, like i'm i do that chat that's my job yeah i know I, right right that's true but i mean are you a guy that would get hired to illustrate um well it's just started too so maybe you will get maybe you will lose all your work but i mean just just kidding but you know uh i'm, I'm talking about people that you know maybe work for game companies and and are creating designs it's like it's reasonable. It's reasonable to feel afraid of losing your job if you have built a career on this certain kind of job, and you've got kids, I, and you've got I health it. insurance. Well, you know, what is the reality? And there's that reactionary, like, oh my god. But yeah. Think about the reality of what you're saying. Are they saying that all of these companies are going to shrink to just management, tinkering away on? Yeah, this yeah, board, right, yeah. Business? Or are they saying that that like? Again, the old lady that lives next door, she'll work for half the money. Right. She can be <laughs> Is that going to happen? I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just don't really, I don't think the world works like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I really don't. And it's like if if you've got a company with you know fifty people doing dedicated illustration animation work, like is 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 the idea? I mean, okay, if there's a company that's just like cool, we can save all this money and fire all those people, and now now me and Chet, sorry Chet, that's your name, me me and Chet, we're the bosses <laughs> of this company. Me and Chet. <laughs> Uh, are the bosses of this game company. We fired all our whole creative staff. And now we're just going to do it on our little phone. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> do you think that company is going to be as successful as the company? Yeah, yeah. The, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know I, I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I just, I... I'm trying to be as objective and see it from the different sides as I can, as the many different sides as I can. So... That's why I was thinking, you know, which is good. It's great. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I, I don't know. It just seems like what's the smartest way to approach this? You know, I keep thinking, you know, what all, all of the say these say a bunch of illustrators do lose their jobs because, like I said, I did, I did go through this in effects, and it did slowly make the job pool smaller, but not so small that everybody lost their jobs by any means but it's it's kind of funny that maybe the one area that will be totally untouched by ai is a original fine art physical fine art it's like yeah there is not really the, the reason people collect art paintings is because they want the physical hand done piece. And it's, I just can't see and nothing will replace that ever. Yeah. Because people want that connection to another human. Right. Mind. Right. So, so it, like, yeah, I know it's not a threat to that. Yeah. And it, so it might be like, Hey, all of you illustrators who have been working as a service for other people, maybe you should start thinking about, you know, uh, exploring your own ideas, your own identity as an artist, and and creating your own work and really seeing yourself as a fine artist or as a an art brand or whatever you want to call it yeah. expressing your own work and figure out how to sell your own work as a fine yeah. artist it's like you know that's what i did it took a long time it was really hard the money's not the as good but that's that's the thing the, right. the human imagination like we are very far away from replicating that right maybe we'll never do that but that that's very very sci-fi you know i mean if it's in, if if it's infinite if the mind is infinite like the spiritual traditions teach then there's nothing to worry about in that way <laughs> <laughs> as far as imagination goes you know what i mean i just you know i, I honestly feel like when, when we're thinking about things that are going to be disrupting our lives in the next five ten twenty years like like you know if if it if it changes the makeup of the creative fields, like I don't and I don't want to come across as unsympathetic, of course, to somebody who's somehow lost their job to a, a machine, to, mm. to to like a, a, a an unethical company that, or or, or to again my neighbour right. you know, who's doing the work <laughs> but half the money on her phone. Um, of course, I'm sympathetic to anybody who who's going to lose their job, but it's like in the context of what we're all going through beyond just the art world, every industry, you know, cost of living, famine, war, um, global warming, like, you know, global yeah, war, right. war, the ongoing pandemic, the next one that's coming, right. um, food insecurity, water insecurity. I know, I know. It's just our own individual mortality, right? you know, and what the fuck are the tic tacs? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> on top of everything else. <laughs> on top of everything else. What the fuck is going on there? Um, our ghost is real. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, it's like, yeah, okay. These are these are all con these are all concerns, um, and, and and some of them bigger than others, and some of them more pressing than others. But right. I just just feel that if artists would would be a bit less kind of like we should cancel people because because i'm hearing that yeah from prominent people really like very prominent people who are like 
screech. I hate to say it, but screeching online, um, being very insulting to their fellow humans. This is what happened with NFTs, a hundred percent too. I know. Know. Look again, it happened with photography. It happened right. with digital. Right. Even with that's 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 kind of the uh, that's kind of the you know. uh, that's kind of the other thing I was thinking. Uh, all all the all the people that are or are a lot of the people that seem to be upset about AI are digital artists who work for yep. game companies and book illustrators and stuff, but they're doing stuff digitally. They were at one point the people who are now using AI. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, yeah, can't yeah, you yeah. see that you were the person that the uh, that the traditional artists who uh, were, that's who, you know, you were that to them. So I don't know. Another Try. another thing to, to always, be, I always bear in mind with this stuff is it's it's very, very, very easy to take an ethical stance and go online and, and signal your virtue about it um, with something that you're not already doing. Right. You know? it's much yeah, hard, yeah. It's much harder to go, oh, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. That's way worse than AI. Just eating yeah, my, right. my meat, right? Myself, I can stop, but I know I know it's terrible. But yeah. it's like, you know, it's it's if you it's the same thing with the NFTs. It's like an artist goes, "I'm not already doing this. This is something I can go online, show all my friends and the world how pure part I am. Right? It doesn't cost me a thing. I don't have to change a thing. But I get to I get to take a stance. I get to look good. I don't know, and I'm sure it's not a conscious thing for most people, but I don't know. I just I just feel like we're back at this. We're back at this thing again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's fascinating, though, and it, you know, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's well, we fun. we got through your life story. Now let's get back to AI. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to know about your uh, uh, your your comic career. Really, it's like how did? Because I mean, you're well. I don't know. I'm not connected to the comic world at all, so I don't know who's. You know, other than Grant Morrison or something, it's like I don't really know the big players in the scene. I'm kind yeah. of ignorant to I'm, that. So I'm not a big player in the scene. But but <laughs> but you but you have a a spot in there, right? I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. I think. I mean, you know, like I've you're like an I indie think, comic uh, creator in the space, yeah, correct? Yeah. But but even even then even in like on a global scale scale within the indie comics world I would imagine I am kind of a nobody. <laughs> you know, like, why do you think I that mean, is though? Because your stuff is great. Well, it's great. Well, thank you. Um, I think part. I mean, look, I don't know. It's not um, and that's not like a value judgment on myself, and it's not something that I'm like, oh, you know, right. sad about. Um, but it's it's just the reality of it, really. You know, like I am probably. I mean, you know, growing up in New Zealand, being in the comics scene there, very um, vibrant. Uh, when I, you know, I'm sh sure it still is, and Australia has got its own comic scene, um, just like every country has got its like indie right. kind of comic scene and stuff. And um, you know, I, I've always been kind of part of of those communities, but I haven't really done any comics um, for about. <laughs> six years so that's mm. maybe part of it <laughs> maybe if i had been concentrating on comics for the last six years i might have got a little bit further down down there and you know my, my stuff's currently out of print as well so okay can't, can't get it unless i send you the pdf so did, um, you, did you take like a, a little detour with nfts with the is that what happened or no the nft thing just came like relatively recently um okay. so i basically just kind of had I, I did like um so my 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 book um so what happened was I, I moved to Australia I met a guy called James Andre who um, was setting up a little bedroom publishing house called mm -hmm. Milk Shadow Book James Andre shout out to James love that guy amazing he published me as the first person to go I love your work I want to put it out oh cool um and he put out these books like you haven't seen the that's that's like a hard copy of one of my books you know it's awesome beautiful yeah great, great. Professional. um put these out we, we got them out all over australia the world they were, you could get them in book depositories and people were buying them all over the world blah, blah, blah. um and that was great um the the first book was the silent comics that you read that shines and shakes and laughs mm -hmm. um the second one was he wanted to collect my mr unpronounceable stories which had um 
uh, there were only about 50 pages of them um, at that point. When he when he said he wanted to collect them, I was like, why don't I do like another um, 150 pages and we'll put out a bigger book? He was like, okay. And so I did a whole bunch of Mr. Unpronounceable stuff. And he'd already, he was already like my main character, you know, like he he'd, he'd, he was the sort of, you know, um, to, totemic, I think, for my my shadow self, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, self-righteous and um delusional grandeur and like <laughs> this, this like pointless unending search for occult truth and right. um, self-sabotage all of that stuff <laughs> um, and just so much fun to write you know Mr. Unpronounceable writing Mr. Unpronounceable comics and working with him that's for me that's the sort of the art funneling through me and you know that's me interfacing with that surrealist kind of click you know mm -hmm. the synapses go junk and goosh open up to a big tunnel and the, the thought juice pours out and that's my favorite favorite right. stuff yeah. um, and so i did a bunch of mr unpronounceable stuff uh, mr unpronounceable adventures that came out he was like let's do a sequel so then i did mr unpronounceable and the sect of the bleeding eye which was a lot more cohesive as like one story still very incoherent um you know <laughs> like um and, and 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 then I really started exploring this idea of like time. I, I don't know if you read all of the Mr. Unpronounceable stuff. Or no, did no. You get through, um, ch check that out too when you get a time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I started them, but there's this sort of as you progress through, you'll see that there are these like storylines from the future, like my future, where I go back into storylines that I did like 10, 15 years ago. And that shadowy figure that appeared 15 years ago turns out to be Mr. Unpronounceable from the future. Oh, I love, so yeah, I love that. Like, I love that kind twisted. of thing. Yeah. And it makes no sense. But if you try and unpick it, it's like, <laughs> this doesn't work at all. But like, <laughs> you know, um, we're working with doppelgangers. We're working with multiple parallel dimensions and timelines. Yeah. Um, and time travel uh, altogether. Um, and so I did the, the and then, that came out and then I immediately started working on um Mr. Unpronounceable and the and the Infinity of Nightmares, which is that's the cover for yeah, that. Yeah, so awesome. Um, thank you. So that's the third the third book in that trilogy of books. Um and my um my son um had been born around that time and it you know it, it was taking me like a year and a half of like just very dedicated work to get a book out and then two years for the next one and I was like, I might just take a break from comics, I think, hmm. you know? Um, and uh, I had been doing a lot of painting, like watercolor painting, and, you know, digital illustration and, and commercial work here and there and stuff. Um, and I, you know, at a certain point, I started uh, selling little paintings online mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, just like really like little paintings. Mm -hmm. um, I saw an article, this guy was like, yeah, I just, you know, I do a picture in the morning and I post it on Instagram and somebody buys it and that's my job. Right, <laughs> I was yeah. like, wait a minute, let's have a go at that. And, <laughs> you know, I was we were, I was watching um, Trailer Park Boys with my wife and there's an episode where, um, I don't know if you know the show, Trailer mm -hmm. Park Boys. Yeah. There, there's an episode where they decide that they've been doing, their crimes that they've been doing are too big, drawing too much attention. So they need to do lots of, tiny crime you know <laughs> like, it all adds up so that yeah. was the idea. i called my little paintings tiny crimes because i could do i could do 10 or 15 of them a week and 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 sell them for i don't know 50 bucks right. 80 bucks but it adds up and yeah, you can do sure. you can't do a big painting in a week it takes like three or yeah. four um and so i started doing that while i was still working and by the i'm working all the way through this like at a day job as well oh. like i, I work I worked in animation in New Zealand. Um, what did I do? What, what was my career trajectory in my day job? Fruit shop, car petrol station, car wash, library. That was good. Pizza place. That was awesome. Lots of free pizza and beer. Um, <laughs> and I saw the White Stripes play before they were famous. They came and played at a little pizza restaurant. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, and then I uh, got a job in animation. And then I came to Australia, washed dishes wash dishes, wash dishes. And then I got a job at an art store uh, selling uh, in the wholesale department, selling art supplies. 
Um, and I worked there right up until the pandemic. Um, hit. So I worked oh, wow. there for like nine years or something. Um, and uh, towards the end of that um, art store stuff, I was doing my little online paintings and, you know, I, I was doing really well. And I was like, shit, this is fucking fantastic. Like I'm really making a lot more money yeah. on top of my day job, like getting somewhere. Like I've been in so much debt and, and ruination financially my whole life. Um, yeah, I can relate. <laughs> my student loan was just insane. Like yeah. I actually went, I went bankrupt in New Zealand. Like I, I, I actually went insolvent. Yeah, um, I probably should have done that, but I, but I stupidly <laughs> didn't. It was a painful like three years. Yeah. Um, but you know, my loan was like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. It's wow. Insane. Crazy. crazy. And most crazy. of that was in. Anyway, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, selling my little paintings online. Uh, then the pandemic happened and um, I had to leave my job because somebody had to stay home with um, my little boy to teach, to be his teacher. Wow. You know? Not his teacher, his, his care, his caretaker while he was learning online. Right. Which was horrible as anybody who had to do that knows. Um, and, uh, but then I was like, well, you know, um, let's see what happens if I dedicate all of my time. Finally, um, to being a full-time artist and um just absolutely started blowing my um my in my monetary intake at a day job that I, I you know i was only still there because it was security right. and economy, what am i going to do be a full-time artist Ugh, i don't think so <laughs> um but then the pandemic happened and i was and i i learned the valuable lesson that um there is no such thing as oh yeah security right yeah or a sure thing. Yep. nothing Nothing at all is um, a sure thing, or, or, or insecurity doesn't exist. So, it was the it was the kick I needed to get me into being a full time artist, really. And so I was just selling my little paintings and staying at home for a good year and a half. Um, so you know, it was bad being in those lockdowns in Melbourne, um, but it was also kind of a weird time because. It was like, oh well, I've I've achieved what I've wanted to do my whole life. Right. Just stay at home and draw pictures, essentially. Yeah. Like make my own art and just sell that, you know. Yeah. So I was turning down illustration work at that time because it was just like, well, I don't don't even need to do this album cover. That's just, great. Just draw whatever I want and sell that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then John asked me to do the toddler pillars thing, and then that's been the last year and a half. Um and then you asked me to be on your podcast. And here wow. we are. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, that's cool. I didn't realize you um you you didn't go uh full time until the pandemic. Yeah, like I was thought I had you know, I don't even think I turned forty. I was about to turn forty, I think, when that happened. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's like I, I was part of me before the pandemic happened was kind of like, I guess I'll just be working here for the rest of my life. That's fine. Um, but I think I was starting to slide into midlife crisis mode, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. I think there was some stuff going on with my mental health around uh, maybe some unfulfilled ambition. Um, but that's fine now. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's great. Like, I, You know, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Um, doing you know what i what i what i do like yeah so um, so what do you i mean how how do you how do you make your money now it's like are you well, still kind of like take a commercial job post a painting up publish yeah, a comic much, book just um, kind of like we all do sort of like whatever we need to do multiple, with our art multiple income streams i've got i've got a patreon oh yeah that's right patreon yeah we gotta mention the patreon yeah, yeah. Um, so I send a little postcard, like watercolor postcards. It's I send it in an envelope so it doesn't get battered. But um, I send a little watercolor picture out to uh, a bunch of people every month um, on a on a particular tier. Um, it's either dealer's choice or they might request something. So it's just a little, little painting yeah. out in the mail a month, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, cool. Um, I do commissions with watercolor stuff. Um, I'm not really doing so many just like rant. I'm not actually doing any random. Here's a painting I did. Who wants to buy it? I would just post a painting and go, uh, blah, 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 for sale. Um, 
100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever. First one to message me gets it, you know. Mm-hmm. And for a period of time, they, they were selling within like 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah. That's it was amazing. Yeah, so good. Um, but that's been a lot tougher lately. And I think it's because the middle class is slowly eroding. Um, yeah, which I know. <laughs> I know. That That is, you know, that is. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to get back. So that was I don't like want to get of, back into AI again. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it, these are bigger issues. This is this is the this is the gl- global financial situation and and, and war and, and food yeah, insecurity. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not on everything else, but um, you know, so the audience that I think was um buying my little paintings uh is feeling a little bit um less into treating themselves on, you know, like yeah. a, um. That's why you Which, always kind of have to be finding new yeah. collectors, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think that, you know, so, I mean, you know, that's that's a, that's a thing. I'd like to, you know, I, I'm, I'm still doing some larger commissions, though, like watercolors. Like, I just mm-hmm. I just finished a piece. It was fun to – so it is nice to, like, you know, work on, like, a, a big piece and know that you've sold it. Um, right. Yeah, your watercolors are – for awesome. two weeks and hoping that somebody buys it you know um because it is sort of week to week um the um i'm i'm doing um a bunch of album covers um some of them i'm doing ai assisted stuff you know i'm, I'm following you <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, you know, people people are like oh can you do an illustration for me i'm like what 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 do you want like you know what it used to be watercolor or digital now it's like is it the ai stuff that you're into and i'm some some people are like i really like what you're doing with the ai like, yeah. because it's it's like it's basically the ai stuff if you if you look at it um it's like photography it's it's, it's yeah. surreal unreal film photography yeah. stuff so it's a whole nother thing that i can do now yeah yeah it's a reference machine yeah a reference um, material machine well it's that too exactly yeah, um like... in, in any case i'm doing that i'm, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing the the, the the toddler pillars thing um, definitely got me out of a hole financially, um, but it's not a source of ongoing income at this point. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe it'll, <laughs> it'll take off again. Maybe the market will, will you know maybe ETH will skyrocket. Yeah. And that'll be. Um, but yeah, just lots of little lots of little things. Um, some big things kind of on the horizon. Like I'm entering a. I got I got asked to enter a competition. Um, it's always nice when somebody reaches out and says, would you like to enter this competition? Yeah. Um, and the prize money for that is nuts. So like, that'd be, that'd be awesome if I won that. Um, but yeah, that's not, I'm not counting that in my projected income. Right. Um, but it's just, you know, whole bunch of little thing, tiny crimes. They all yep. tiny to mid sized crimes kind of add up. Um, that's what it takes. Yeah. Just, just sort of working hard. I'm sort of, I, I've, I'm sort of I've taken a bit of a break from the um, the graphic novel work for Toddler Pillars because I um, just went insane like working on it like for 15 hours a day just yeah. to get like <laughs> chunk done um, you know and Christopher was working like an absolute maniac like producing just so much amazing work yeah, and stuff that it was crazy it's like we can we consider like th- there's no like there's a there's a long potentially long kind of lead time on that so i was kind of like wait a minute we're, we're, we're heading towards the silly season christmas is coming i've got to go to new zealand in a couple of days to see my father um mm. so i'm kind of like i'm just gonna like relax a little bit like that my one of my worst problems is i don't ever switch off or allow myself time to just yeah. kind of be um so i'm really you know, because I'm, because I, 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 there's a bit of a kind of like whatever part of me is taking the foot off the brake a little bit, I'm kind of embracing that as a whole person and kind of going, okay, I'll play some PlayStation tonight. Right. You know, like I'll I'll sleep in or I'll have, I'll have a nap today and catch up on yeah, some sleep. I've gotten better. Generally, I sleep enough, and generally I work. Like yeah, this. I've gotten better well, better at that as I've gotten older. There was there. Naps the best. Yeah. Like you can get like five hours sleep, have a half hour nap in the afternoon. You know, right, right. That's more sustainable than not having a nap. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's funny because I, I was just looking at old episodes on the of the podcast, and I think it was probably I don't know when it was six months ago. I I have no my perception of time is so screwed up. Uh, yeah, maybe it's only three months ago. I don't remember. But but I I specifically made a decision that I have to just slow down, even if shit isn't getting done. I just have to because I just am yeah. going to die. I'm going to die young yeah. if I don't. There's no way. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, yeah. And, and so now I've just gotten a lot better at, uh, you know, taking a break, taking breaks, and taking time off, and giving myself a day on the weekend to just hang around. And you just have yeah. to. You just have to. I sort of the, for for the longest time, I, I think my mentality was like if I. If I just grind hard enough, yeah. long enough, I'll earn myself a yeah. bit of a break. But it's just like years go by. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Still haven't really had much of a break. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's better just to take take a little time off here and there. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, we, moved, we moved away from Melbourne, um, my family, to uh, my wife's little hometown in regional coastal Queensland. And so, like, the climate here is just it's beautiful and we're we're very close to a beach oh, nice. um you know, 25 minutes drive to this stretch of like untouched paradise so like you know try and get out there on a sunday and just spend as much time just away from screens and then work and everything and just swim and yeah hang that's out cool. just, you know recharge because so what, what are we doing this for i mean you know yeah i know it's to conquer the world with our artistic vision but i mean who cares <laughs> because <laughs> shit. You know, if you yeah if you can't enjoy your family and and your friends and um just being a human just existing you know yeah. that should be enough now and then yeah so yeah getting better at that that's good i have to ask you this sounds this will sound like a dumb american question because it, it is kind of a dumb american question but yeah. okay how different is new zealand from australia like in general and just broad terms because like, i'm curious about that because they're so close and you know how every, yeah. you know i thought you were australian at first on the last interview and i'm sure it, it's just like <laughs> people do that they 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 uh call new zealanders australians and vice versa and it's like yeah how different is the culture is it is it similar is it like america and canada you know? Yeah, I th I mean, I haven't been to America or Canada, so I've only got pop culture, right. um, you know, and culture, cultural references um, to draw on. But I think that's generally the the vibe. Um, Australia is also like not Australia is like America in the sense that it's a bunch of states that are. That, you know, there's a national identity that people have in Australia, mm -hmm. but there's all there's also a very state based identity right. as well. So, okay. like, you know, if you're in Tasmania at the bottom of Australia, you know, living in a pretty windy, chilly environment for most of the year, amongst sort of, you know, um, either on like windswept kind of craggy farms on this little island, or I don't, you know. Um, untouched wilderness forests um, or, or in the like Hobart, which is very sort of beautiful and quaint and there's this like lovely architecture. That's a different experience than somebody living at the top end in Darwin, you know, like you yeah. can't swim in the water with giant crocodiles and right. crocodiles don't be, or, or like we're in the red center. You know, and there's, 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 there's white Australia, there's multicultural Australia, there's indigenous Australia. Right. Um, so Australia in of itself is a very different place internally. Um, and then New Zealand is kind of like New Zealand. I think Australia sees New Zealand as like its little cousin, you know, but very like different sort of, I don't know, the, the, the cultural sort of New Zealand is like a beautiful place. Um, I love it. I'm going to be back there in a couple of days. It's wild. I haven't been back for so long. Um, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. you know very very small there's only about four million people in new zealand wow um one of the things that i always find fascinating and i think this is really indicative of the national psyche of new zealand is that 
There are four there are four million New Zealanders in New Zealand, but there are about four million New Zealanders not in New Zealand. So mm. like half of us live overseas. And for me, like the New Zealand national psyche is very like split down the middle. Like it's 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 either very insular or it's very like get me out of here. The world is big. This place right. is too small. Half of us, including myself, kind of, you know, it's just too small, you right. know, for whatever reason. Like, and that, the, you know, the, the geography, I think, of a place, like, I'm a big believer in the idea that, like, the actual surroundings and geography of a place is, has a real impact on, on the humans that live inside of it. Mm-hmm. And New Zealand's very, like, hilly and wine, like, the roads are winding and there's greenery and bush everywhere. And you always feel sort of, enclosed and encapsulated and um most of the places i've been in australia so far it's just flat that's you interesting that yeah that is um, that's totally a different uh energy kind of you the know energy I mean? is very 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 different um and i prefer the energy here to be honest for better or for worse i mean there's a lot of stuff that's not great about australia there's a lot of stuff that's not great about new zealand they both yeah. got their they both got their um, absolute positive sides and their negative right. sides, like anyone else. Um, but yeah, you know, generally, if you put an Australian and a Kiwi together on the other side of the world, it's like you're not really, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're pro- you're pro- they're probably a lot closer than a Canadian and American, right? I think, you know, yeah, that's Depends interesting. Though. Depends on the New Zealander and their and yeah, the yeah, yeah. I know it's a dumb, it's kind of a dumb question, but I it's. I don't know. It's what I was thinking about. I'm, I'm curious about it. Yeah. Um, I have a collector. We're all becoming so globalized anyway. You yeah, I mean? yeah, right, right. It's Everything's kind of different. becoming America <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you guys do have a big gravitational pull. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Well, Sorry about that. That's okay. But I mean, you know, America, I think, is becoming... Fuck, actually, what do I know? America from the outside seems... Like when I talk about the insular nature of part of the New Zealand psyche, America is like, like it looks so from the outside, it looks crazy. Like yeah. the amount of many of you guys that just, my brother went to visit New Zealand when he was, uh, sorry, went to visit America when he was in high school. He went to the Grand Canyon and some other teenagers he met were like, they were like, you know, where are you from? And he's like, oh, I'm from New Zealand. And they were like, oh, what state is that in? You know, and it's right, like that, yeah. that's that there are other countries um yeah yeah it is super uh self-centered in general i feel like 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 america america feels like it's the center of the universe uh I, well you know it kind of is in a way but it I mean, ca- yeah but it, it's just weird because you know i feel like i'm viewing it from outside of it you know i watch the news and stuff and it's like wow it's this country is insane. Glad I was there. Oh wait, <laughs> but yeah, but 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 in my immediate surroundings, it's like I never see any craziness. And I guess maybe it's because where I live in California, it's in a decent neighborhood, and yeah, uh, and you know, unless you go down into downtown LA or something, and then you see all the craziness. But um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Everything, everything, everywhere is going insane everywhere it's like everything's oh, yeah. collapsing and falling apart it's crazy that's why that's why the ai thing it's just so weird that this that all this is happening at the same time and this ai is happening and it's like the whole economy is going to completely change because every single job is going to be able to be done by ai in for better or for worse it's just you you don't even you can't even count on a dystopia from that it's like so crazy. It could be anything could happen. It's like who the hell knows? It's so game changing. Uh, I mean, this is what this kid. I was watching this uh, kid speak. <laughs> We're coming back to AI again. <laughs> but I was watching. I was watching uh, uh, this guy interview an AI engineer, and he was like this young kid, this kind of nerdy kid, and he was a bit naive, but a full believer in AI. But he was he was kind of like. You know, we're envisioning a utopia because everything's going to be free because everything will just be won't cost anything to make because of AI and the way it's going to affect everything. And it's like, okay, if everything is free, how is anybody going to make any money? It just sounds like 
yeah, yeah. It's it sounds like a yeah. It sounds like some kind of it would it would, it sounds like it would have to be a completely different. Well, it's Star Trek economy. That's what that's what they're they're going for. You know, There's yeah, that, I get that main, right. I won't rest until we have fully automated gay space communism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just know. how can you even? It's just is if if that's the case, it's just like. It's just weird because the technology is happening so fast and politics and the law move so slow. That's what's crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's just like the, 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 the issue with the data mining, the way they got the data. It's like, okay, there needs to be, there's that lot, there's a lawsuit that there is the first lawsuit against GitHub because of mm-hmm. their use of that, um, that program to get data, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, something to do with coding, something to do with like, it's not for an artist that's doing it. It's like a, a, another, uh, I shouldn't even say it cause I don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway, there is a lawsuit and lawsuits need to happen in order for precedent to be set for these new laws to catch up with the technology. Right. It's like, yeah, no one disagrees with that. That's the way it works. But law you know the law this the the uh, judicial system is just slow as shit it can take years and by the time that gets settled you know now we're making movies by typing in a prompt that you that are so good that you could show them in a theater it's just like well, are, we, are we there yet you not know, yet like, but it's like what in five years maybe 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 it's the, one what the ai because the ai is writing the AI and it's like, this yeah. is like the singularity, man. This is when everything starts happening at the same time. And you I mean, can't... if it does turn out like, you know, the, the rise of the machines, Terminator style, like that's also like, okay, well let's roll, let's roll. With that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that. But... <laughs> uh, but... that I'm not, that's, I'm not even saying that it's a bad thing or that it's necessarily like this evil it's going to definitely go bad. I'm saying it's it's completely unpredictable. Yeah. As it's and, and and it's it's almost unimaginable. It's like I can't even well, imagine what the what the outcome of that would be in 5 or 10 years. I remember living in the 90s, <laughs> you know, <laughs> before uh, before 9/11. Um right. and that felt like a period of uh peaceful stagnation. Uh mm-hmm. and every every thing you know of of course a lot of people living during that time in other parts of the world didn't feel that way right I was a teenager living in new zealand yeah you know, right like right really had, it, had it easy but um it's really nothing to worry about from where i was standing um part of that was being a teenager yeah but, you know 9 11 happened and then um it really feels like since then it's just been this slow steady progression into very chaotic times and then when david bowie died then things really went over the, over the <laughs> I, I, part of me does subscribe to the fact that he was some sort of cosmic linchpin holding it all together <laughs> grenade he was the pin in the grenade uh, maybe i don't know <laughs> um but uh you know for, for better or for worse we really really do live um at a, at a crux in history you know yeah and um most of the people that live or have lived in our long 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 history as a, as a species um keeps seems to keep getting longer i don't know like you know the, the more you, you know they keep finding oh well it, look, it looks like humans were around even, right, even right. long that's weird yeah um who knows? You know, that's a whole other. That's a whole other podcast. Um, probably not this one. <laughs> whatever, you know. And the Tic Tacs. What the fuck are they? But anyway, <laughs> um, and the other shit. You know, all that other shit that's going on. Um, but but um, most people have not lived in times like these. You know, and most people do have lived in times of stagnation and and for better or for worse, whatever that means. Whether it was like the Dark Ages or the middle, you know, hundreds mm-hmm. of years exactly the same thing um i feel like those long periods of time where nothing much happens really are just a sort of period periods of time where they don't really produce 
you know, positive changes, you know, something has to, you know, a revolution. I'm not advocating violent yeah. revolution. Yeah. Ever, but, yeah. yeah. It's the know. tension. It's just like the stuff, you know, Mitch Horowitz, I had him on the, the podcast, this whole, you know, idea of Satanism being Satan as a figure of the adversary, the, the thing that the, you know, the, it's the, it's the tension between the two things that makes anything yep. happen. So, yeah, yeah. so it's like, obviously there's these tensions are getting more tensiony, <laughs> And so yep. it's going to yep. make something happen. It's, it's making make all... a lot of people crazy. It's yeah. making a lot of people crazy. That's it's the thing. People, people um, are, people are going insane because there's nothing to hold on to. It's like, yeah. if you don't, ad I feel like if you don't learn to surf this craziness, then, then you'll get dragged under uh -huh. like the chaos. If you don't learn to surf yeah. the chaos, you will be pulled under and drowned and, and pull, yeah. being pulled under and drowned means you go crazy. So it's, you, yeah. you have to like adapt a kind of a new attitude about life. Like you have to, you have to trust it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the hard part. You know, you have to yeah. go, I yeah. trust that this is happening. I'm here for some reason. I'm supposed to be here and this is supposed to be this way somehow and i can't understand it that's the way i view it yeah it's, it's almost I mean, like a, you know, it's, a faith thing it's easier, in a way. It's easier if, if you're living a like you know like the both of us with yeah living, right relatively comfortable lives We're not yeah yeah if, in Ukraine, yeah exactly if you're in ukraine or whatever it's yeah it, it's totally mm -hmm. coming from a, a place of privilege for sure but i mean but because of that that's kind of a good reason to not fucking go crazy and complain and like, right Right, like, right. Be horrible to other humans. Maybe, maybe if you use a little bit of that privilege just to kind of take some deep breaths, at least, and you know, not be an asshole to people. Right. Like, <laughs> just a lift. It's just a, it's a small thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but they, no. Look, these are crazy times for sure. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have to be kind of like somebody who's feeding that shit back into the, you know, in whatever small way that I am, um, just, you know, it's not getting ahead of ourselves. It's a very, very small little window that, that I'm pushing my stuff through into, into the wider world. Right. But um, I, I feel immensely grateful and, and privileged that that's, I seem to have found a role that, you know, I've been preparing myself for my whole life, you know? Yeah. It seems, um, I, I mean, it seems it's just a little, it's a little thing of my own that I'm, that I'm doing a little, little thing. I'm in a little town I'm doing a little thing. And, um, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, like, but that's, that's it though. You know, you crack the code, you did it. That's like, that's the thing. And, and it's, it's not about, uh, how rich or how huge I can get Clear, mm. clearly massive fame is not necessarily a good rewarding thing or a good <laughs> healthy, mentally healthy thing as we, as we, <laughs> as we know. But um, I mean, you know that you, you, you've done it, you've done it. And it's like, it's like, uh, I feel like, you know, I've done it as well. And a lot of our, yeah. our, any artist who, is happy with what they have and is able to make a living wage is again for, for now like you know yeah, the thing that, right the thing, the thing that losing my having to lose my secure job taught me is that like i'm now somewhere even less secure than I was. or or you you are or you are um in the same position you just have a different perspective of yeah. your security now <laughs> like more like the more like the job before was a false sense of security that's the way i kind of yeah. look at it because it could have yeah, ended yeah. when i got laid off it was you're laid off at the end of the week after working at this place for five years and and it's yeah. like nothing nothing like i mean and, and that's yeah. even worse because i didn't have an infrastructure set up I, to I make a America, living as an artist. And, oh yeah, they'll let know, you fucking anyway. die in America. You know, yeah. it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And we are so lucky. Like, I mean, you actually, to, to be honest, you guys are unlucky because mo most of the, I know. the West 
that's, that's what we have, which is, I'm not even, I'm not even an Australian citizen and I can access free health, healthcare here. You know, that's how, as yeah, a New Zealander. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. It's so fucked up. That's a, that's a whole the, other story, but it's, it's terrible. But yeah, it's just, uh, and so as, as, a, as, as an American who, uh, would be left to die if I didn't have, if I couldn't if got sick and didn't pay, couldn't pay my bills. It's like the only way I can, I don't know, deal with that and not go insane is to sort of surf the sea of chaos and just kind of go with it, you know? Keep and, making and, art. Yeah. Keep making, yeah, exactly. Keep making art, do my best, try and, you know, I don't know, just try and, Try and trust it. Try and trust reality. Uh, you know, I feel like if you're, if you're, if you, if you don't trust reality, then you're you're fighting with everything. And 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 the the the, the overall vibe is like everything's against me, or potentially. And it's like how it, that's not really that's not a good way to live. That's like how no. a wild, wild animal lives in the jungle. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just you know. The thing that's more and more and more like I find myself very easily sliding into this sort of mindset um, about things, you know, and I've, I've, I've said it earlier, it's just like infinite universe surrounding us, you know, and this time scale, cosmic, you know, but, you know, we're, we're here right now and like, I don't know. Like it's about those perspectives, you know. If you mm -hmm. if you're able to kind of to to put, you know, if, if we've we've all got our basket of worries, you know, in our skull, you know, and we we add to it, you know, the rent, you know, my kids sick, and the the pen, you know, the pandemic, and the mm -hmm. war in Ukraine, and the tic tacs. Well, I'm not too worried about the tic tacs. <laughs> That's interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, all of these things, we you put them in a basket in your head, and eventually it just sinks down into your heart and you're, you're weighed down by it but i don't know like sometimes i like to think of my head as actually being the size of the universe it's not i'm not alex gray or anything <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, not, I'm just i'm i'm a pretty I'm, a, I'm actually a very i think pretty pragmatic um you know like i do i do, do i, I i've called myself an armchair occultist at mm. times you know like i i i do swim and synchronicity when it's when it's um when it's roiling you know but it doesn't always and we do live right. in, a, in a world we do live in a world of meat and bone diseased meat and bone you know mm. and, and and these things these things that like like the, the that sort of satanic adversary thing they they, they do live together you know? mm -hmm. and yeah and it's like one one thing always has to sort of influence the other like you can't go too woo but but also you can't just just dwell in the in the mud and yeah. the, and, and the raw the raw meat of it all um easier said than done but i i don't know like i feel maybe it's just something that comes with age yeah. as well yeah yeah i don't know I definitely... not going too far in either direction mm. yeah there's 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 no answer no. that's what i always come back to there's yeah, just no know. answer and you have to be okay with that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know but, um... <laughs> Weird, weird stuff is good that's that's yeah that's a truism for me weird 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 is good embrace the weird basically Embr yeah embrace Stay weird. yeah yeah <laughs> Stay weird. <laughs> that's 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 a, a a good credo to live by well um okay do you, so we I, i'm gonna let you go because we're we're going pretty long here uh yeah, what, it's what uh do you have any final things to promote or anything or we want to get people uh, to your patreon uh, people to your website yeah, and all this I, stuff i should have written some would you, will you will you have links yeah yeah your, I'll, uh... I'll, I'll put links <laughs> to everything oh, in there well, okay so my, um you know if you the best place to probably just follow along with with my day-to-day -day thing uh and if you hate ai don't go there because I'm doing a lot of AI stuff at the moment. But you check it out. I really want you to check it I out. I am. Yeah, I can't wait. Just go back and get, go to episode one of uh, Legends of the Golden Child. And okay. like, because I'm doing like, I'm right. It's writing. It's a it's a writing project primarily. So I'm I'm writing a show on Instagram. So cool. Um, so check that out. Um, but uh, I do other stuff too there. You know, watercolors and comics and check out um, toddler pillars. 
dot com. Um, we're we're you know we we we're sort of um expanding from our digital collectible uh you know um NFT start to oh. you know, our bigger bigger brand. Yeah, I didn't admit, I I I did see a couple pages. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, man! It looks so good. It's, it's going to be amazing. I mean, it's you, so amazing. Most, most of it is most of it is Christopher um, Auric. I mean, you you can't if you have if you've got a genius on board, it's gonna it's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> you know, it looks it looks know, amazing. Thank you. No, I mean, this is the only NFT. I don't think any NFT project has done something this cool. Can you think of one? I can't think of one. I mean, there are probably a lot. So, you know, I, I've been too busy to um, really look at it. Uh, yeah, it could have happened. It could have happened and we missed it. But I haven't seen anything close to, to to this. This is kind of like what the NFTs always promise to deliver. You know, some big, yeah. cool, amazing project at the end of it for yeah. all the supporters. And it lives up to that expectation, I think, that you hear from a lot of NFT projects. Well, we're working on it, you know, and it's all it's all very based in, in art and creativity, and you know, we're we're hoping to once the graphic novel is done, that's that's a step along the road to you know maybe a an animated series. Right. And that's this is all stuff that's and, just that's going on. And by the but time Instagram, by the time sorry. by time by the time you get to that point, you'll be able to do a text prompt to create your animated <laughs> yeah, <well>. show. <laughs> kind of little man. I mean, how rewarding is it though, just to like do it on your phone? I know, I know. I'm just videos, kidding. Like, I'm just kidding. I want to. I want to go to Hollywood parties. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to get into like the cult stuff in Hollywood. And, you know, <laughs> drink, drink blood and shit. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. It's Very overrated. Kidding. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, just check out my Instagram. That's my sort of day to day. That's uh, Tim Malloy Art. Tim Malloy Art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my website's timmalloy.com. My wonderful wife, Angela, just put a website together for me. Way better than my old one. Oh, um, good. That's going to be a repository for you, a lot of my, most of my, my little watercolor paintings. There's like hundreds and hundreds of little watercolor paintings you can go through. Um, yeah, Patreon is, is great if you want to throw a little bit of um, money my way to help keep me doing my thing. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, um, that's that's about it really i think cool well yeah. i'll put everything in the links and um yeah. yeah thanks so much for coming on super fun talking to you yeah you too i had a great a great chat and we'll we'll do another uh another one about ai if you want i would love to do that seriously maybe okay. down the road um yeah when when after i've been canceled can <laughs> redeem <it. laughs> <laughs> after after at the point when it's accepted and everyone's just doing it you know probably. Yeah, yeah. um yeah uh so yeah thank you for coming on great to talk to you don't hang up and say okay you just have to say goodbye to the audience all right goodbye audience goodbye Thanks, audience yes.